Several years ago, when my wife and I were preparing to bring our baby boy into the world, many people presented gifts in the typical baby shower fashion. But my friend Sherry Shaneth approached us and said, I want to paint the baby's room. A fitting gift from a person whose life, as long as I've known her, has been characterized by serving others. So what can we learn from such a person regarding putting faith to work at work? I'm thinking quite a bit. Let's chat about it. Welcome to Clear Creek Chat. That's Chat with Two T's because this podcast is coming to you from Chattanooga, Tennessee, and is a ministry of the Clear Creek Church of Christ. In each episode, we gather together a couple of our friends to talk about issues that touch our lives locally, but also have broader implications for the kingdom of God. My name is Mitchell Halstead, and today I'm joined by my friend, Sherry Shaneth. And she brought cookies, and I'm so excited. Sherry, also known as the cookie lady. Yes, I am. (laughs) But Sherry does a lot of different things, including working at the aquarium, Tennessee's amazing aquarium in downtown Chattanooga. Now, I know your role is primarily working behind the scenes. Yes. So I'm, I'm willing to bet that you've got some insider information that you would like to share with the tens of listeners. Blow our minds. Go. Let's see if we can bring it up to 11. Okay. Oh, man. <laughs> I'm going to eat a cookie um, while you talk. One day I was in lemur backup. And like the, the animals? Yes. Oh. and the Lemur backup? Yes. Where that- they... Like you take need care additional of people to control them? Well, that's where they take care of them, clean oh. them, where the extra ones stay, all that good stuff. I thought they're bringing in backup. No, the no. Are out we of just control. call it backup. It's the <laughs> behind the scenes area where they take care of stuff. Gotcha. So um, the keepers were back there and they had, we have box turtles in that area. And so they said, come here. They said, scratch the, like you would scratch a dog, scratch the turtle's back, the shell. The shell, okay. And I thought, okay. So I go over there and scratch it. It wiggles like a dog. Oh, <laughs> does it do that every time? You know. Yes, yes, every time. I wouldn't have even thought they could feel things. That's <laughs> what I was thinking. And then another time, we were painting in the Delta exhibit where the alligators are. Yeah. And we were—it's uh, the beach where they warm themselves, and we needed to paint that area. And so they just put up this little orange plastic fence so the alligators wouldn't come get us. And the interesting thing is alligators stare at you the whole time you're there. Kind of like maybe they're thinking you're lunch or something. I'm not sure. But (laughs) but that was a lot of fun. And that's more of the different stuff that I do. But um, there's also, it always cracks me up. People always want to say, is there really that much stuff to paint at the aquarium? You have no idea. (laughs) (laughs) It's basically just a a rotating painting job, right? Yeah, it's just constant. So, but it's a lot of fun, and I work with people that are a lot of fun. So, so you're telling me if I'm ever stuck in a situation where there are alligators present, all I need is an orange barrier, a little orange plastic fence, and you're good. But I do have to withstand their gaze (laughs) (laughs) and worry the entire time. Yeah, and try not to look like you would be delicious (laughs) or anything, you know? Yeah. Oh, that's hard to do. (laughs) It's hard to do. Be really bad in the mosquito exhibit. Oh, yeah. I would not survive that one. All right, now Sherry, you did not uh, you did not write the opening monologue. I did, and, and knowing you, you probably would prefer that I not go on and on about how helpful you are and how you tirelessly ser- tirelessly served your daughter's schools, high school especially, um, as the Uber volunteer mom back in the day, or how you've been a steady fixture of our children's ministry, serving as a lead class teacher uh, for many years. But again, I'm in charge of today's script, and so I'm going to say all those things, and you can't really stop me. But truly, as a member of our staff, I do, and we appreciate all that you've done over the years to serve this church. However, today's podcast is not really about your efforts at serving people within the four walls of the Clear Creek Church of Christ building. It's about what you're doing to take the name of Jesus outside of the church walls and into the wider world. So let's start off by providing a little bit of context into who you are and how you've become the person that you are. So can you tell us a little bit about how and when you initially came to faith? And also, when do you feel like you really began to claim ownership of your faith? I was baptized when I was eight years old. And so church, uh, my faith, all of that, it's just been my entire life. Um, I will say, though, it has changed dramatically, and I thank the Lord for that. Mm. And I will say taking ownership of it 
has probably been very recent. Really? It's been, it's been a process. And I see the Lord through my entire life putting people in my path that I needed to have there to help me grow. And um, Josh's lesson about growth is gradual, and sometimes you need to look back to see it. I can look back through the years, and I can see so many different people in my life that um, really made a difference Mm. and helped me to let go of some things I needed to let go of and uh, just change my thinking. So you're saying that that you're one of, like many people that probably are listening, someone who's been raised in and around the church and Mm -hmm. had been plugged in and volunteered in a church for many years. Even so, you'd say that more recently, you know, you've got two grown kids that are in college or out of college, the age. It's changed for you recently. Yes. And even dramatically, Mm -hmm. the way that you put your faith to work. Yes. My, I will say my life is, does not look like what I thought it would. Ah. And, um, you know, I was a, for the most part, an at-home mom, but I, I had a little side business painting and doing some things. And I realize now that that was preparing me for something now. And um, it just, my life, uh, my day-to-day life is, is, wow, it's so different than what it was. <laughs> uh, I just live in a, a different neighborhood, a different area than what I've ever lived in sure. and that's brought opportunities um full-time job being responsible for myself decisions making every day it's just it's very different um it can be overwhelming it has grown my faith and it has helped me to realize I just you just gotta let go and ask for the Lord to guide you and yeah. and trust that he does and he does so he does. I appreciate you being a bit vulnerable yeah. there. I know it's <laughs> yeah. awkward to do when there's yeah. people listening on, yeah. on the, the interwebs and stuff. But one thing that our church believes in strongly is this idea that every Christian is, is called to spread the good news of Jesus and to be a missionary wherever they find themselves. It doesn't require you to go out of the country. So that no matter who you are, no matter what you do for a living, no matter whom you encounter on a daily basis, you, you all of you can make disciples. So speaking of which, in what ways have you applied this idea of being an everyday missionary to your life currently? Well, many, many years ago, I was in your office and you gave me, there was a book that I saw on your bookshelf and it said, Love Does. And I asked you about it. And you said, oh yeah, that's a good book. I said, well, can I borrow it? Can I read through that? And I, that book was, a, as they say, a game changer mm. for me. Um, it's a man that just thinks about his Christian walk very differently and he does things that most people probably would not do. Oh, that's for sure. (laughs) And, um, it's because there were times, there were so many times when I thought about doing something for someone and I thought, Oh, they'll think that's weird. Maybe I shouldn't do that. They'll think that's weird. And I don't think that anymore. I just don't worry about that. And, um, being an everyday missionary, what I want to do, I think my, I love to laugh, love to make people laugh. Sure. And I want to bring that to other people. And I want them to see that my life looks different and in a good way mm. that they're not sure. Maybe they're not even sure what it is, but it looks different. And hopefully they would want that for their life. And hopefully that's my way of sharing Jesus. And yeah. I'm, and I'm, I'm a servant, like you said, I wanted to paint your nursery. Yeah. If I like to do things for people and, and it's even more fun to me if I do it with, like if I serve with them, cause you, when you work with someone, you talk, you get to know someone, Absolutely. You, you open up and, um, that makes a big difference. And, uh, so that book was a big deal. That it, book, by the way, is love does by Bob, Bob Goff. Goff. And did you ever bring it back to me? I don't know. <laughs> Getting a little personal it's, here. No, it's good. It's good. We're, we're, all, we're all right. We moved past it. <laughs> I've, I've bought many copies through the years. So I'm sure I could replace it. Okay. If you have to replace it, we'll talk, we'll talk offline. Okay. <laughs> um, now you got me off. I'm sorry. You were just uh, talking about how that book has been a game changer for you. Yes. And so I just, that's what I want to do is serve. And it's funny because 
I said, my life looks very different. And where the Lord has put me at the aquarium, I have, there's tons of people that I can serve, that I can bring joy to every day in the little neighborhood I live in. I don't think they're used to having a neighbor that does for them, that wants to reach out. Maybe, you know, they're having a rough time, mow their lawn or bring them some cookies or whatever. Mm-hmm. They're, I, that's a very different thing for them. And um, that has been a true blessing. That's awesome. That, that has been very, very interesting. Well, so, I will, I will yeah. encourage you with this. No one thinks it's weird to receive cookies. <laughs> That is only ever a good thing. I have found that to be very, very true. So I have a funny cookie story. Oh, please do. Um, There turned out, and I won't go into the details, to be a stolen car in front of my house. And I didn't know it was stolen at the time, but I called the police about it. And 15 minutes, three cop cars showed up. And so, you know, we're talking, and they're trying to figure out what's going on with the car, blah, blah, blah. So in a minute, I looked at one, and I said, hey, do you guys like cookies? They said, well, (laughs) Yeah. And I said, what kind? And he said, well, snickerdoodles are our favorite. And I said, I make a mean snickerdoodle. Oh, nice. And so I said, when do you guys, are you on shift again? And they said, two days later. And I said, you come back in two days and I'll have snickerdoodles for you. And I didn't think they'd come back, but they did. The, oh, and you so said the, cookies and they came running. So that's why now I'm known at the police department as the cookie lady. But anyway. <laughs> well, okay. Pause for a second. Even that <laughs> seems minor, seems insignificant, but they, they will now remember at least this thing idea of a cookie lady and that you served them and that's pretty cool they did remember because my daughter got in a wreck and two of the policemen showed up at the wreck and they looked at me and said cookie lady (laughs) (laughs) cookie lady hey there are worse things to be called (laughs) no that's that's wonderful so there you go (laughs) so in your neighborhood which as you say is a different place than you would have ever Mm -hmm. probably picked to have lived you know in your past life Mm -hmm. um the aquarium, which that job you actually sort of fell into because you had been volunteering there for a long time. Is that, am I right? Yes. And I, the funny thing is every day when I'd volunteer, I'm a person of habit Mm. and I would always enter the same way and I would walk by the maintenance shop doors and I always hoped that they were open because I'd always peek inside (laughs) and I thought, Oh, I'd love to be there. Maybe they'll see me. I know. I'd love to be. (laughs) Then I thought, but they don't hire women. And what do I know how to do? They would never hire me. And so then when my last child went to college, Kaylee, I was volunteering and somebody said something about, yeah, I think the aquarium's looking for a painter. And I was like, Oh, a painter. I love to paint. (laughs) I can do that. I can do that. And so my interview with my boss was hilarious because I told him all the reasons why he would not hire me. Ooh, interesting tactic. <laughs> and it worked. <laughs> was it one of those, you shouldn't hire me because I work too hard? Oh, no, it was, I know you'll never hire me, and these are the reasons you won't. <laughs> uh, apparently, did. But and apparently did. Did. did you just bring him some cookies? Because that probably seemed No, the they didn't know about the cookies oh, at they that didn't point. Know. No, I bet they know now. Know. And then after he hired me, I said, you know, if you weren't going to hire me, I was going to volunteer. <laughs> <laughs> of course you were. <laughs> Of course. Well, this is kind of bleeding into the next question a bit, which is good, but what are some intentional choices that you, that you make or perhaps have made to put yourself in a position to have spiritual influence on communities or individuals, again, outside of the church building? And you can go back as far as you want to. I know Hickson High School was a big thing for you for years. I have learned, people tell me stuff. They just open up to me. And I think it's because you're a listening ear. Hmm. I have, I ask about people's lives, you know, how's your, how's your family? How many children you have? If I don't know them, how many children are, you know, whatever. And, um, people just open up and they, they share with me. And, um, I've also realized what a blessing it's been in my life when the Lord put people in my life that helped me to grow and change. And so, why wouldn't he use me in the same way? And um, there's a, a young girl in our group that we just hired on, and she's uh, 20 years old. And we've just, we've just, it turns out we have the same birthday, obviously not the same year, but the same <laughs> birth date. And we were very excited about that. And she's just, she's, she's excited to be there like I was. Just, there's just a lot of similarities there. And we really enjoy one another. And, Sometimes in your life, maybe your your family, there's needs that they don't meet. Your 
birth family. Sure. And so the Lord puts other people in your life to kind of fill those spots. And so I, I hope I'm that blessing for her. But I also told her that she was hired in 2020. And what a year. And what I told year. her, I said, there. I had a lot of struggles in that year for not the typical reasons. But um, I told her, I said, you were definitely one of the really bright spots in my 2020. Wow. And I think that meant a lot to her. And, and, it, and it was it was true. And so the funny thing is, is that you look at discipling as what can I do for others, but it ends up coming, turning around and blessing you. And obviously the Lord and his great wisdom knows that. And I think that's yeah. another reason he calls us to do it. So I think it's cool that you're, you're basically fabricating a family relationship with this person. Mm-hmm. I don't know if that's like a mother daughter or a sister sister type of thing, but you're providing a need that, um, that she needs right now. And it is turning around, as you said, and, and returning the blessing back to you. So that's it's pretty definitely awesome. definitely a mother daughter, but let's not go to grandmother. But I, yeah, was, I, I went the other way for the record <laughs> I appreciate to credit that. you. <laughs> I appreciate that. <laughs> not grandmother. <laughs> okay. So that's an example of how, how God has been blessing your efforts. So mm-hmm. do you have any other stories of ways that you have witnessed God rewarding your efforts to reach others? Yes. In my neighborhood, I have tried to reach out, you know, to different people. And the, there's one couple that sweet as can be. And the first contact I had with them is um, the gentleman from work was helping me with my house. And we were trying to cut through my asphalt driveway and our concrete saw wasn't working. And we needed a deep set socket wrench and didn't have one. <laughs> so I looked at him and I said, I'm going to go door to door. And he said, Oh, I know you will. And so I started heading and just knocking on neighbor's doors. And this gentleman was outside and I told him what I needed. And I mean, he just, Oh yeah, come on back. And he opened up his little shed with all these tools. And so he, that was my first contact. He let me borrow that. And, um, I since I started taking them cookies, I'm going to tell you, they have brought things and just attached it to my door. Hmm. Um, she'll bring me food all the time just help in any way they can just so sweet and so there's that going back that's that's been an amazing relationship yeah and another neighbor I reached out to and then something happened and her granddaughter showed up at my door upset about something and so we as we were talking about it I said you know I, I said I love your it, I love your grandmother to death she's just she's a little sassy like I am and, and she's just <laughs> sweet as can be I love it and she said well I know that has to be true since you know that about her. And I will tell you in the 14 years that she's lived here, you're the only one that's ever reached out to her. Oh, wow. And I thought, thankful, you know, I'm thankful I did, but how sad is that? Yeah. That that's the case. And so that's what I mean. You just, you have no idea the little things you do, what they'll mean to somebody. And, And another thing one lady said is, yeah, you go around picking up trash all the time. And that's one of those things that you think somebody's going to think I'm weird because I pick up trash. But people, they notice it. Well, it, you know, it tells them that you care about yeah. the neighborhood. Yeah. I get teased at work because I pick up trash. They're like, you'll pick up any dirty thing. That's <laughs> <laughs> well, one like, thing. I've had children, please. Yeah, this you is pick nothing. up plenty of dirty this stuff. This is nothing. <laughs> yeah, one thing I feel like I'm hearing is, you, you try to be consistent at work and at home. Uh, and I know you all, you do a lot of other, um, I don't know what you would call it. You, you help people around their house, almost handyman type stuff. I don't stuff. think anybody knows what to no, call it. No one it, knows really, what to call it, but, <laughs> but you, you'll, you'll go and paint people's houses. You'll go in mm-hmm. and do tile work. You'll cut things in people's driveways. Maybe that was just yours. I don't that, know. That neighbor I was talking about, yeah. she had knee surgery and nobody had come to mow her lawn in a while. And so I thought, you know what? I can mow her lawn. So (laughs) I get over there on one lot where that same granddaughter comes out. And I had a, I don't wear a baseball cap very often, but I had a baseball cap on and it, where you can't see as much. And so all of a sudden I turn and that granddaughter's right there. And it was kind of scared me. And she said, my grandmother wants to know why you're out here mowing her lawn. (laughs) (laughs) I said, what, you know, I just thought it might help out, whatever. And so it's again, sad that it was so shocking. That's funny. But it for, was funny. For those that are listening to this and not watching it, Sherry's not a very big person. She's not the kind of person you would expect to be, you know, doing maintenance at the aquarium or, or mowing random people's yards. So and probably, while I was mowing the lawn, the other couple I talked about, he brought me a water and a donut. Well, there you go. There, see, this is great. 
But you know, you, you find you find a crack, a door, you know, yeah. crack in the door, and and you say, I'm going to walk through this, and. In that initial moment, maybe it's just an introduction or a greeting or a, hey, I'm your neighbor. Glad to meet you. How can I help? But I mean, who knows where that might lead? And and you referenced the girl at your work. Um, so that's kind of a question I want to ask. This is sort of off script a little bit, but I know because we were talking about this before we started recording that, that you try to work in, as you develop these relationships, you try to work in conversations about, about God and your faith. How, how has that gone for you? Do you feel like that's gone well? And what's... It, it, I, yeah. I will say <clears throat> the more you do it the more natural it it's kind of just who I am and the like I said I, I ask God to open doors mm-hmm. and so I get to where I just start sharing that with you like man this morning I said a prayer and I said you know could you open this door for me and then <clears throat> excuse me this is what happened and or I said you know, man, I was having such a rough morning and I said, God, show me the positives. And then this happened on the way to work and, or you're sitting at the aquarium and you've got all these amazing octopuses. I think is my favorite, by the way, (laughs) besides the wagging turtles, but, um, you just, you I can say something as simple as every time I see that stuff, I just think God just spoke that into existence and look how cool it is. It works just like it's supposed to. Mm. And then being in, around construction I, I've just always had a fascination with how things are made and you realize how long it takes to do something and when you think that God made all these amazing animals this beautiful earth all these seasons everything works like it's supposed to and he spoke it mm. and there it was and I think that's amazing because it takes us forever just to redo a bathroom or paint a wall or whatever <laughs> Yeah, so. Nah, that's that's a beautiful thought. I appreciate that. Okay, so we've heard some some positive things, but it's not always easy. Disciple making, as we've often mm-hmm. said, is not as easy as it seems like it should be. So, what are some personal obstacles that you uh, have had to overcome, and and maybe even still have to overcome on a regular basis? I think anytime you're you're really trying to do for the Lord. Satan is very unhappy about that Mm. and tries to step in. And I know things in my personal life can sometimes be overwhelming. And so then you'd start to get bogged down with self and trying to, you know, make decisions, get things done, do, you know, whatever. And then you, wow, I haven't checked on this neighbor for a while or I haven't brought cookies for a while or I haven't you know whatever your little thing is it's like I need to get that's my I I read something a little while ago that said sit down and write down your purpose what you think your purpose is and I did it and it's that's something that I just need to I haven't posted it yet but I just need to post it where it's in front of me all the time as a daily reminder that Yes, I've got to make decisions. I've got to make sure I can eat and that I have, you know, a place to live and all of that. But this is my purpose. When this is all done, it's going to matter that this is what I concentrated on and that this is what was most important. And then when you bring God into your conversations and you try to be a different person, another struggle I have is when you don't match up to that. When you have a bad day and (laughs) <laughs> maybe you chew on somebody or the yeah. wrong word comes out sure. or you know whatever that doesn't match up with hey she's supposed to be a christian and um that's a that's a struggle because boy i've had things put in front of me before that you just think wow <laughs> how am i supposed to deal with that and and i hope i deal with things the way the lord would want me to and that but that's i don't ever and I, and I know I'm not, thankfully the Lord knows I'm not perfect and he wants to use me anyway, but um, I, that would, I think about that a lot, mm-hmm. that I want people to see that and know it's authentic and yeah. not never think it's a show or something. Cool. I appreciate that. All right. So on a similar note, uh, and we asked this in our previous interview podcast, but if you could go back to 20 year old Sherry. And, and, you know, so now you're that girl from, from your work that you've been, you know, kind of mentoring a bit. What do you tell her that she needs to hear? What God tells us over and over, do not be afraid. Mm. I was so afraid of 
really afraid of what people thought about me, afraid of making the wrong decisions, just afraid of not measuring up, just you name it. I was probably afraid of it. I was terribly shy as a child. And uh, I wish I could have let it go of that a long time ago. Mm. And not real. And I used to go around thinking that everybody was just staring at me and laughing. And, it, and if you <laughs> just realize nobody's looking at you, nobody cares. <laughs> <laughs> That's a hard one to get in your mind mm-hmm. when you're young. It's very hard. For sure. For sure. All right. So skip ahead 10 years. You know, 30 year old you, things have changed in your life, obviously. Um, what does that person need to hear? I wish I had seen my spiritual life differently. Mm. I saw it as um, lived with a lot of guilt. You know, um, boy, today I did pretty good, or uh, today I didn't do so good. You know, Jesus, sorry, don't come back today because <laughs> today wasn't such a hot <laughs> don't, day. Don't tune in yeah, today. <laughs> today wasn't such a hot day. Could you ignore it? Um, I wish I could have just let go of that guilt and realized that it's not about oh, am I going to make it to heaven? I know I'm going to heaven. I know the Lord loves me. He knows my heart. He knows I'm not perfect. But that's not the point. The point is I just want to serve him. Hmm. I just want to, he's got a purpose for me. And when I get there someday, I just, I just want him to, I I just want him to say, you know, you did it. You you did it. Well done. Well done. Yeah. You did it. You, you, that's what I wanted for you and you, and you made it. So, yeah. Cool. Okay. Well, there's probably people listening that, that might feel that disciple making, you know, reaching people for Jesus is somebody else's job. Some people get paid for it, but it's not me. Or they might think that they're just not equipped to do it themselves. Perhaps they're afraid. Uh, What do you tell those people? Well, first of all, not to make this a guilt thing, but I consider it a privilege that God even asked because when I look at myself, I think, wow, I'm pretty sure he could have picked better, but, um, he want, he wants me to be part of it. Absolutely. And I think that's amazing because I will tell you as a painter, there are certain people I do not want painting with me. (laughs) (laughs) They're just not very good. But, um, I, I think it's amazing that as messed up as I am, he still wants to use me. And so I'm going to sit there and tell him no. I just, it, to me, it's a privilege that he asked. And the other thing is, just like I have found my unique way that it's not a chore, it's something I love to do. Mm-hmm. And everybody has their own unique gifts, their own unique way of sharing. And can God do it without you? He's God. Yes, he can. But, but that would be missing. You know, your way brings joy and brings good just like mine does it doesn't look like mine sure but it's yours and that's why he made us all so unique and so different and he wants he needs he wants us all and so and i always loved it when you'd hear people at a certain age say well i served for years i'm done and it's like (laughs) i'm pretty sure (laughs) we just keep going (laughs) we just keep going that one always cracks me up but um so we don't have anything to worry about in the children's ministry from sherry (laughs) No, no, I did resign from the third and fourth oh, grade. You resigned. I Great. did, but um, uh, I'll definitely. The Lord is right? always going to be using me. That's right. It was it was somebody else's turn to step up and sure, show sure. their gifts. <laughs> but, yeah. It's not because you have done it. You know, you paid your dues. <laughs> oh, I paid some dues, <laughs> buddy. Some dues. <laughs> I'm just teasing. I'm just well. Thank thank you for sharing uh, all of these insights. I hope that this has been a blessing to someone else. It's been a blessing to me. I always enjoy a good chance to to catch up. That is all the time that we've got for today's podcast. So again, thank you for joining me on the podcast today, Sherry, and thank you for providing a a fuller picture of how each of us can and should put our faith to work at work, while at work, and even when work leads over uh, to home. Uh, But to the rest of you out there, remember. If you are a disciple, you are called to spread the good news of Jesus Christ to your neighbors throughout your city and to the very ends of the earth. Grace and peace.